Fans of the Horus Heresy and Warhammer 40,000, thank you very much for joining me for an out-of-the-pack review of a Space Marine Super Heavy Tank. Of course, you're all thinking it's time for Leaky Cheese to do a review of the Astraeus Super Heavy Grav Tank. And it isn't. After much contemplation and thinking about it, I decided on the Stable Mate, which of course is this hunker stuff, which is the Legion Fellblade. This is a tank with some noticeable history in the Horus Heresy game. This was the first of the Space Marine Super Heavies, or the Legion variants of those Super Heavy tanks. And this was released at the same time as Book One Betrayal came on the scene. And I think that was back in 2012. I decided on this because at the end of the day, I just couldn't quite get the feels for the Astraeus. It just wasn't quite there for me. And the other thing is as well, this kit is 40 quid cheaper. So this costs 180 pounds at the moment in the United Kingdom. And it's more potent on the battlefield, significantly more potent. Uh, thanks chapter approved for the points up buff. And as well, you get a whole hunk of spare parts in this kit, which can be used for other purposes as well. So that's my little preamble. What we're going to do in this review is I'm going to get this kit out of the pack. We're going to look at all the parts in detail. We're going to check the quality and just generally see what it looks like. So let's go. There you go, that looks better. I've put some lights on as well. Right, but a bit overcast today. Right, so, gosh. Well, let's get out the contents of the bag. So firstly, we've got one hull section or one track unit, let's call it. Then we've got a second one. We've got the upper hull or the hull deck. That's a big chunk of resin. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five bags of components, the fifth one being the tracks. And then finally, we have three sprues from the Bane Blade kit. And that is a significant reason why this model is cheaper than a normal Super Heavy of this size from Forge Worlds is because it is a plastic resin hybrid, which poses challenges and opportunities in equal measure. Then we get a packing sheet and some instructions. All right, so let's so what, let's move those to one side. And we'll start with the QC sheet. So this was packed by, oh, I can't remember his name, but let's call, I call him MR or ME. And this was done on the 10th of November. So this is a pretty new kit, only a few weeks old. That's all, that's fine. And then we've got the instruction guide. Now, um, this is old school style construction. It's not too bad in terms of showing you how to do it. Um, I've built the Legion Glaive already, so I've been through this process. The instructions tell you where everything goes. What they don't necessarily explain so well is the best order in which to put things together, particularly the hull, and the hull is quite a tricky assembly. Ditto on the tracks. Now, this is a great kit, but it isn't the easiest kit. So in true Leaky Cheese style, I do a series of videos and just looking at the tricks and tips around putting this together. Right, let us begin then. So we'll have a quick look at the plastic bits. You get two of these sprues, which is a left and right track system or unit. And then you also get this, which is the road wheels and the lower hull. So you're actually not gonna use that many bits out of this. The good thing at the end of this is you'll be left with the tracks and the outer plates. I'll tell you a funny story about that at some point. First thing to say is this is actually my second fell blade. I actually bought this kit at the Warhammer 40,000 open weekend, which was uh, Saturday the 25th of November. However, when I got it home and I'd washed it, quite a lot of parts, namely these side pieces and the upper deck and the last cannons and the tracks, 
they were permanently coated with release gunk. Well, the release agent had reacted with the surface of the resin, so they were left very shiny and tacky to the touch. So I had to take that one back, and those kind people at the Forge World Warhammer World store did me an exchange, and we've got this copy, which looks absolutely mint. Let's actually look at it. So these are two quite hefty bits of resin. Good alignment. This is all nicely lined up. We've got these um, little um, details on the tracks. Yeah, that's a great looking part. Much, much better than the other one. And it's nice and dry to the touch that. So there's no issue there with release agent reactions. So that's the first of the two. So I'll pop that there. This is the second of the two. Now there's a bit of, I think it's some release agent stuck on it. We'll see what happens with that. It's not a reaction like I had before. Um, so hopefully that's gonna wash out when I rinse it. But if it doesn't, it's dry, so that will sand off uh, if there's any relief. Another wonderfully cast part, and it's very encouraging to see a kit being turned out like this. It's not a brand new kit, this is what, five years old. I would wager that that piece there, and these two pieces have been turned out as nicely as the first kits that came off the line. So that's very nice to see. Right, let's look at the upper deck. This is a lovely chunky bit of resin. A bit of slippage here, and that doesn't really matter because what's going to happen here is that's going to go like so. So any imperfections on these sides are going to be covered by the track units. But saying that, um, everything is looking pretty nicely lined up. There's a little bit of slippage here. A bit more there. A little bit on the back. I think the back's hidden by another piece. I think most of this ends up hidden as well, actually. All in all, that's very good. That uh, That's a bit more noticeable for a slip. However, again, this is hidden by the mud guard or the track cover, if you prefer. Wonderful um, detailing on the uh, engine cooling uh, or air intake area. I do like that. It's very nice. Right, let's do, oh, let's tell you what, let's look at the big stuff. Now this kit was designed by one of uh, my favorite forge wall designers, if not perhaps the favorite, Stuart Williamson. And Mr. Williamson has done a wonderful job of capturing an interesting new look, the turret that he designed on this. And anyone who knows anything about Cold War armored vehicles will look at this and think T-54 stroke 55 and the other Russian MBTs that came afterwards for quite a while. This sort of hemispherical rounded off turret, but he's executed it beautifully. And it's such a cool looking tank, this. Twin cupolas, look, these look absolutely ace. You get crew for these as well, which is fantastic. You can see here, part of the turret bin, uh, perhaps it's an ammunition storage bin that's gonna go here. The only thing this model probably lacks is some smoke dispenser. So I think there's a conversion opportunity to mount some on here. Um, which I'm gonna have a go at. Great looking turret. Mr. Williamson certainly ticks the boxes for my aesthetic tastes on tanks. Right, then we have the main gun, which is a twin fell blade accelerator cannon. So this is essentially, as far as I can tell from the fluff, a rail gun. And there's a pair of them just for extra DACA. That all looks very nice. Very nice indeed. Got some nice, um, side vents on the muzzle brakes. I think there's a boring out opportunity here. I'm definitely gonna have a crack at that. I've not seen it done on this tank. I think it'll look brilliant. You've got a nice hefty muzzle brake to work on as well, so um, no real room for error, or sorry, there is room for error, beg your pardon. A little bit of cleanup to do between the barrel supports, but no, that's, that's uh, spot on, very good. Right, let's stick with the big chunky bits and we will do we've got we've got the glasses plate and the front deck. Very nice looking. I do love the look of this. This um, recess here is where the ball mounted demolisher cannon is going to sit. And this is a mounting point for the heavy bolter stroke heavy flamer turret, the twin 
weapon position. Very good. And then we have the power pack. A little bit of air bubbling to fill there on the lower edge. It's no big drama. Yeah, that's really nice. Really nicely done. Just a little bit of the mold slip to put right there, but the other side looks good. Brilliant. It's got a nice hefty power pack this time. As you would expect, it's enormous. It must weigh a couple of hundred tons. Right, then what have we got here? So we've got some, what we might call the large components. So we'll do a little shifty of these. We'll take a look at what's in this first bag. So let's start with the long range fuel tanks. A little slip to put right there. These mount uh, sort of here. I never put mine on my fell blade because I think they look a bit anachronistic um, for the sci-fi look of a tank. Now, that's a personal thing and I'm not criticizing the design at all because I can see they're quite I don't know, they're very similar to the ones on the Bane blade, so there's a bit of a cue there. And also it's sticking with this slightly Soviet feel to parts of a tank. And of course, a lot of Soviet era tanks mounted fuel tanks or long additional fuel tanks externally on the rear. Done you, haven't we? These are the two rear mudguards. A little slippy to put off there and a bit to sort out there as well. I actually think both of those imperfections are on the inside, so they're not even going to be visible. Good stuff. I'll tell you one thing already with unpacking this kit, I can tell it hasn't got the mold release issue that the last one did. What I will do at the end of this video is I'll put a few outtakes of the unboxing route video that I did, <laughs> where I talk about how slimy the other one was, just so you can see what it's like. Just in case you get in like that, so you know what it is and what has happened is too much release agent. So what Forge would use is a water soluble alcohol gel, as far as I understand it, and too much release agent or too much of this gel has been sprayed into the mold. What then happens is it pools and when the resin's put in and it then reacts, you get a strong exothermic reaction. It actually reacts with the surface of the resin uh, and leaves this sort of strange, sticky, soft surface, which isn't supposed to happen. I'll leave those at the end of the video, you know, just for your amusement and education. Right, back to the kit. Let's look at the turret basket. A bit to clean there. Otherwise, that's bob on. Perfect. Lots of good details. I'm gonna sit here, like that. Gives a tanker a bit of a, hmm, I don't know, there are a number of well-known World War II tanks that had turret baskets, various Churchill tanks, um, Shermans, the Sherman Firefly is a very notable one. Perhaps Mr. Williamson was thinking of that. Right, we've then got idler and sprocket wheels. I don't know which is which. I can't quite remember. And well, of course, we don't really know, so it's a sci-fi vehicle. You've got these two, which are the front ones. Bit of cleanup to do in there. Bit of a slip to take off there. And very helpfully, all of these are labeled. So this is left track part three, right track part three. And that's really helped with the track units. And the other thing with the track units is to start at the top and work your way around. That was the designer's tip. I can't quite remember how I did it when I did my glaive because I also seem to remember that getting the alignment on these is really pivotal at the front and back. Alignment aside, these are beautifully cast. These really are. I mean, there's little bits of clean up. It's very nicely done. And yeah, these um, bolt details, these bolt head details on the track links are very well captured, as are these little joins here. Yeah, very well done. Okay, let's do a bit of weaponry. This is the twin heavy bolter, which is going to go in the front hull weapons position, which is this thing here. Nice design cue lifting from the Land Raider armored Proteus here for continuity of design style. Very good touch, do like that. Here's a gun that's gonna give a lot of people a lot of headaches, and that's the good old demolisher cannon. Great little design style here with these, what appear to be vents, 
around the barrel. This puts me in mind of the Sturm Tiger from World War II, which had a rocket powered 380 millimeter mortar and that had a similar arrangement on its cannon to allow exhaust gases to escape. Another nice little real world capture on the design here. This plate is basically what keeps the demolisher cannon in position in that little mounting turret. And we've got the two front mounts. These are for the idlers, I think, sprocket wheels. We don't know which is which because we don't know if it's front or rear transmission or both. Probably rear. So what that make these? That would make these idler wheels, wouldn't it? Yeah, front idler wheels. Hmm, bit of speculation there. They look really good, got some nice details. Getting these positioned properly on the hull when you're building it is absolutely critical for getting the tracks right, so important parts there. Got a pair of rhino sized doors to go on these mounting points here. I've bought something rather new and special to put in here, and I'll be doing another review on that shortly. Yeah, really nicely cast. This is actually one of the easiest kits to review I've done in a long time because it's so well turned out. Now these, there's a bit of a seam to take away or a slip here. And that's just going across that rivet. So not quite so nicely turned out these parts. It will clean up. But yeah, I suppose a, a couple of bad ones aren't too... Well, these aren't really bad. As the same again there. I mean, a mixture of filing and filling will get that looking absolutely perfect. One more bag of parts to do in terms of like bits and pieces, and we've got a whole load of tracks to look at. Right, so I'm running out of space here. Let's do a bit more guns and ammo. So, on the Sponson position, this vehicle has two quad LAS cannons, or alternatively, a single laser destroyer array. They look absolutely boss, and you can articulate them. What's these casting quality like? These look good, actually. I've already, I checked them in the bag in the shop, but they look really good. These LAS cannons have been some of the most problematic and annoying parts I've come across for mold slippage, and there's a little bit there. And a big old air bubble. Whopping great air bubble to fill there. Probably fill that before I cut off the sprue. Those are actually good. Um, they're nicely turned out. A little bit of cleanup at the back. I've had some examples of those where the actual last cannons, the barrels are slipped by half a millimetre and it's just absolutely terrible. But these are really good and just what I'd like to see. I mean, that needs cleaning off there. A bit more work to do on this one in total, but at least there's nothing on the actual ribbing that's uh, too worrisome. And unlike the first set of last cannons, these aren't all sticky and tacky. And soft of a touch. Yeah. Yeah, lovely, beautiful parts. Very nicely done. Four exhaust stacks that are going to sit in the power pack. They all look very good. A little bit of cleanup here and there, but uh, well formed. No filled in cooling holes, which are always a nuisance to put right. Well, you just have to do a lot of drilling. These are the two mounting brackets for the last cannon batteries on the side. Little bits of clean up here and there. Yeah, very good. Sticking with the side sponsor weapons, these are cables, uh, the various power cables. So I think there's one that goes on top, one underneath, or something like that. I just forget. These that. two little bits cover up part of the Bane Blades chassis at the rear, somewhere around here, if I remember rightly. These are the two mounting points for the side mounted last cannon batteries. And these are the internal attachment discs that allow them to rotate. So yeah, it's got flash. You can see the flash in there, can't you? There you go. That, that'll clean out easily. These are the targeting doohickeys and watsets. Again, these are part of the last cannon mountings. Lots of good detail on those and really nicely cast, which is always important with cables like that. Uh, to exhaust inlet pipes, perhaps, or something. Those are going to mount there. 
And then we have a set of little brackets that are going to kind of attach the side track units onto the hull. Well, they're kind of attached. I don't know if attach is a word, is the right word for it. These are kind of cosmetic, but they do look great when they're done. A little bit of a slip to sort out on that one, but uh, not too bad. Right, I mentioned about the two crew and here are the hombres in question. Very nice designs. Cool that they've got, uh, instead of wearing their backpacks, they're linked into power systems on the tank, come back focus. Really cool, you know, if you were an Iron Hands character, one of these might rather well represent their tank ace centurion, Castromen Orth in the Heresy, of course. Two cupolas for the two crew positions up on top. Two arms, so you've got a nice bionic arm, so perfect iron hands material. Uh, these are in Mark II armor, carrying a Phobos bolt pistol, looks very groovy. Two shoulder pads. That one, these two just lost a bit of detail at the top, you can see there. So that's going to need a bit of repair work, I think. Don't know. I'll, I'll think what to do with those. I might, if I've got a spare iron hands one, I'll probably use that. And these are a couple more of those plate things. And then the last significant structural part is the front hull. Great looking part. This again is another one of those very important pieces for getting the whole thing lined up right. Um, yeah, we'll have a talk about that when I get to the build. By the way, I do like the towing lug attachment points. I'll drill those through. Those will look ace. I think that just leaves us with the tracks to do. So these two long sections sit on the underside of a vehicle. This is a bit of a, a bit of clean up to do on the sides of them. These are actually really nice to cast so looking at them. In particular, and I remember on my glaive, I had to spend hours, a couple of hours work cleaning up these um, bolt heads between the tracks just to get all the flashing gunk out of them. These look really, really well turned out. Yeah, good work, Forgewald. I think these go on the upper hull, but yeah, same drill. Again. Very nicely turned out. And as I was saying, these are all numbered, which helps no end with assembly. In all fairness, the other kit I had, um, everything was very nicely lined up in the main. I think there was one slip on one of these side units, which was repairable, but quite notable. But it was actually, everything was lined up very well. The only issue was, was the parts where there'd been the reaction between the mold release and the resin. That's another perfectly turned out bit. Then we're on to the last two, and then we are done. Excellent, and yeah, nice and, uh, nice and dry to the touch. Obviously this needs a wash, as all Forge Oil kits do, but um, I can tell it's a good one. It's a really good one. Oh, so there you have it. That was a pretty big unboxing. I'd forgotten how large a kit this was. It's actually, it's, an, it's a real monster. And it's probably, I say it's a resin plastic hybrid. Well, it's actually, once you've built it, it pretty much looks like a full resin kit because just about everything you can see is resin and that's a really clever design. I'm dead excited to do this. It's a really iconic looking Space Marine vehicle. It's just a cool tank. Never mind if it's Space Marine, whatever. It's a really cool looking tank. It's a great kit. So that's the unboxing. I will be doing a series of videos on the construction and preparation of this kit over the next few weeks. So do keep an eye out for those videos as I start to bring this together. It should be a really nice series. Hope you've enjoyed watching that. As always, share your thoughts and ideas and observations about this model in the comments. I'm already braced for the Astraeus versus Fellblade commentary. That should be interesting. Looking forward to that greatly. But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. 
I'll speak to you next time and goodbye. I almost nearly did an Apollo Diomedes impression then, but I restrained myself. And this grilling, there's no imperfections on that, so that's pretty good. One thing I will say though, super slippy. There's an absolute stack of release agent grease on that, so that is gonna need a good bath, or a good bath if you prefer. Right, so let's do the first of the side units. Now, whoa, now I said, now you can see it, you can see it in the light, gosh. If that one was slimy, this is super slimy. I mean, this is like a whole colony of slugs in terms of the release agent sliminess. And usefully, the kit designer, which was Stuart Williamson, one of my forge or favorites, as you'll know if you watch my videos regularly, has put a little R here, so you know it's a right-hand side. Very good. Again, super slippy dippy, got a snail colony, or perhaps something a lot slimier than slugs or snails. How about a hagfish colony? Yeah, now hagfish, that's some serious slime you've got going on there. But yeah, super slimy. Whoa, oh gosh, grease tacular. This thing's like a sea cucumber that spewed its innards out in defense of itself. Yeah, blimey. Slippy, but good. Ooh, uh, Mrs. Shh. If there's any noise in the background, it's due to hamsters.